Welcome to Goosebumps. Hello, my Goosebump fans. It's time for chapters 21 and 22 of R.L. Stein's Slappy World. Now remember, pay close attention so you can answer those questions at the end. There's only two. Make sure you do them correctly and make sure you do them with complete sentences. That's the most important part. Remember, a capital at the beginning, a period at the end, and then fill in the blank on those other questions. Let's get started on chapter 21 and 22. Ian slumped into his room and slammed the door behind him. Shut up, shut up, shut up, he cried, but Slappy wouldn't stop giggling. Ian grabbed the dummy by his shoulders and shook it, shook it hard, making its wooden head bounce. Shut up, shut up. Slappy's eyes twirled and he giggled louder. With a cry of disgust, Ian pulled open his closet door and heaved the dummy into the back of the closet. Slappy bounced off the wall and folded himself over. Sprawled in a pile of dirty t-shirts and jeans, he finally stopped his annoying laughter. Ian gripped the closet door handle tightly and stared at the dummy for a long moment. Are you going to sit up now? Are you going to talk to me? Are you going to get me in more trouble? Why are you doing this to me? Ian realized he was trembling his whole body shaking in fear. The dummy was alive, and he was the only one who knew it. No one believed him. No one. He was alone here with this. This creature. The dummy didn't move. Not a twitch. It remained folded over on the itself on the closet floor. Ian shut the closet. He made sure it clicked securely. I wish I had a lock on this door. He began to pace back and forth across his room. He held his hands tightly clasped in front of him. He couldn't stop trembling, couldn't stop the shudders that rolled down his back. Those words, those weird words must have brought him to life. But what did the dummy want? Just to embarrass him in front of his family? To get him in trouble? I should have known something was wrong with this dummy just from the evil grin on its painted mouth, Ian told himself. Dad should have known better. Someone sent... Dad, the dummy, with no return address. Of course they didn't put on a return address. They didn't want it back. Ian shuddered again. He didn't want the dummy either. But how could he get rid of it? He was going to need help. So first, he had to convince everyone that he was telling the truth. He had to prove to them that the dummy was alive. He suddenly felt weary, worn out. He glanced at the clock above his, head, the, his desk. Half an hour past his bedtime. Could he sleep? Could he sleep knowing that the dummy was alive inside the closet? He took a deep breath and pulled open the closet door. He expected Slappy to be standing there ready to jump out at him. But no, the dummy hadn't moved. It sat in a lifeless heap with its head bowed. Ian let out a long sigh. Once again, he carefully closed the door, making sure it clicked tightly. Should, it, should he put a chair or something heavy to block it? Ian yawned. He was suddenly too sleepy to think about it. He pulled off his clothes and tossed them on the floor. Then he found a pair of pajamas in his dresser drawer and tugged them on. A warm breeze ruffled the curtains at his bedroom window. He heard a car honk somewhere in the distance. He climbed into bed and pulled the covers up to his chin. Ian fell asleep as soon as his head hit the pillow. How long did he sleep? Not very long. He was awakened by a thump and scraping sound. Huh? Ian sat straight up, blinking himself awake. He realized it wasn't morning. He could see a sliver of, the, of a moon in the, mid, in the night sky. He heard another thump, a bump. Someone walking around, walking in the dark. His senses were all alert now. His skin tingled. He struggled to focus at the dim light. Another footstep. He started to stand up. His feet tangled in the bed sheet. He nearly fell. Hey! He caught his balance and stepped away from the bed. He gazed around the room. Whoa. Ian saw right away what had changed. The closet door was open. A chill rolled slowly down his back. He forced himself to walk to the closet. He grabbed the door and clicked on the light. He peered to the back of the closet. Slappy was gone. Chapter 22 Ian felt his knees start to fold. He gripped the edge of the closet door to keep himself up. He squinted into the closet. Yellow light from the ceiling bulb spread over the closet floor, the empty closet floor. Ian kept thinking maybe he was still asleep. 
Maybe he was dreaming. Maybe he was sleepwalking and dreaming that the dummy had picked himself up and walked away, but he knew he was awake. And another soft thud from the hallway, another footstep heading towards the stairs, snapped him completely alert, and he suddenly knew this was his chance. Slappy was walking to the stairs, and this was Ian's chance to get the proof he needed, the proof he needed to show his parents that Slappy was alive. My phone, he murmured. Where did I leave my phone? He gazed around the room, not on his desk where he usually left it, not plugged into the charger near his bed. Ian saw his jeans piled in the center of the floor, picked them up and fumbled through the pockets. Yes. He grabbed the phone in his trembling hand and, and pushed the camera icon. Ready. Ian stepped into the hall. A dim night light at the floor cast a pale cone of light over the wall. No one was there. Slappy must be making his way down the stairs. Holding his breath, Ian tiptoed over to the soft carpet, hurrying to the stairway. He raised the phone in front of him, ready to capture his proof. A photo of the dummy walking down the steps by himself would have to convince his parents that he was telling the truth. He heard another soft thud. The stairs creaked. Ignoring the chills that went down his back, Ian stepped to the top of the stairs. Darkness below, but he could see the dummy moving slowly down one step at a time, a hand sliding along the banister. Yes, got him. Ian raised the camera aimed at down of the stairs and clicked a photo. He blinked in the lighting but white burst of the flash. Click. He flashed another, another burst of white light, and Ian opened his mouth in a startled gasp. Oh no, no way. What was happening? Tune in tomorrow. For the next chapters. All right, chapters 23 and or 22 and 23. Go in and answer your questions. Complete sentences every time. Complete sentences always start with a capital, always end with a period. Do them, and then we'll see you tomorrow for chapters 23 and 24.